Hi, I'm Katie. And I'm Joe. And today we're going to talk about the night we came to terms with death. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Born Again Again podcast. If you like what we're doing on here, you can find us on our Facebook group, our Instagram, or our Patreon, and you can find all those links in the description below. So today we're talking about death. It's going to be really morbid. And really no. fun. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be that morbid. Yeah, so I I think that as a Christian, a lot of your time is spent thinking about death. Yeah. M- maybe not exactly, but you're thinking about your eternity. Right. Right. From like a young age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, we talked about that before on other episodes, how it's so weird, like growing up in a Christian home, I feel like we were thinking about death, like before we were 10, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe everyone does that, even if they're not religious. But for me, I felt like I thought about death more than the average like ten year old did. Well, I'm sure because there's always that fear of hell, or people talking about heaven, or just if relatives die, you're thinking about, or your parents are telling you they're in heaven now, and so yeah. you're constantly, you know, wondering where am I going to go, right. or. I, I know where I'm going to go, and that's great. You know, I don't feel at home here anyway. Right. right. Yeah. It's kind of just like a hot topic. Yes, it hot is topic. a hot topic. <laughs> yeah. We used to talk a lot about how we weren't at home in this world, and we sported all of those not-of-this-world, oh, yeah. you know, T-shirts and hoodies, um, and we were really proud of that. I loved, I loved that company. Shout and you out loved, to that company. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because yeah, not of this I, world. When I was a Christian, I felt like that's kind of what I felt like. I wasn't of this world, and I mean, of course, like the Bible literally tells you that you shouldn't be of this world and that kind of stuff. But I really took a lot of pride in that, and I felt like, yeah, this world's not my home. You love and that I, concept. I yeah. feel like that was one of the, the bigger, I don't know, things that you focused on. Yeah, it kind of defined my worldview. Mm-hmm. You know, like the whole idea that. I was living in this world, but I wasn't of this world Mm -hmm. and this world wasn't my home. Eternity is my home. And I'm just here temporarily as like an ambassador for God or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, that was kind of a big part of my Christian faith was that whole idea that this was like just a temporary place for me. And this wasn't my real home. I think there's something romantic about feeling that way. Like when I look back at it, it seems like you you know, in fairy tales and movies or, you know, the hero is sort of always an outcast and yeah. you kind of felt that way, you know, like I don't really belong here with all these other people. You right. know, I don't belong in this fallen world. And I felt like I had this romantic idea of it. Like that's how I maybe justified it and, and looked at, at that concept that it was very romantic, you know, like those scenes in a movie where you're longingly looking out of a car window and they're playing some type of moody song and you're kind of like looking beyond Mm -hmm. to the future or another world. I felt that was my mood for, (laughs) for thinking of not of this world or thinking about the afterlife. I never felt that I belonged in this world. And, and I, I thought that was, and you felt that way too, but I, I think we both thought that it was such a cool way to think about life. But now after the fact, I'm realizing that the only way or reason we thought that way was because it was conditioned. Right. In, into oh, yeah, us, you for know? sure. Well, you're taught all the time that you're an outsider. And like you were saying, I felt like we actually ended up taking that. And and for uh, or for me, that was a good thing. Mm-hmm. Like you said, I, I took pride in the fact that I wasn't at home in this world. Mm hmm. And I, I took pride in the fact that I was living for eternity, you know, instead of just living for, oh, the wicked ways of the world or whatever else I thought at the time. So, yeah, it, it was weird. It, it was weird as a Christian being so, I want don't want to say preoccupied with death, but like death was on our mind a lot because we talked about heaven and eternity a lot. Mm-hmm. And then almost like taking pride in the fact that my life here is temporary and that I was going somewhere else, which would be my real home. Yes. And yeah. so speaking of that, what did you think your real home looked like when you died? Yeah. Uh, well, I believed in heaven as in, I didn't really know what exactly that meant because I don't think the Bible is super descriptive on what heaven will actually be like. But I, I thought that it was going to be, um, basically a new earth that was going to be like a paradise version of this earth. And I, I thought that my family was going to be there. I thought that you would be there too. 
Um, I didn't know if we would still be married or not. <laughs> you know, I, I hoped we were. Mm-hmm. But I, I thought that you would be there and everyone I cared about, all of the Christian people that I cared about, I assumed that they would be there in heaven with me. And so for me, I, I honestly kind of, this is going to sound really morbid, and I didn't actually live my life this way, but intellectually, I looked forward to death in a way. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know, because for me, living in this world, in this fallen world, it was it was difficult and I I didn't feel at home. And I felt like kind of at odds with a lot of the people around me who were in my same age group and a lot of my peers who weren't Christian and stuff. I felt like separate from them. And while I did take pride in that feeling of being separate, because I think subconsciously I thought of myself as like better than them Mm -hmm. (laughs) in in a weird, prideful way. I also felt like it was a bit of a burden, you know, I don't know. Did you, what did you feel like? Did, did you feel like it was kind of a burden to live in this world as a Christian? Yes. For different reasons. Sometimes I still feel like it's a burden to live now, but it's just because <laughs> life has its challenges. Yeah, and sure. I think that when you're a Christian, you look at those challenges as challenges against your very Christian nature. Right. And you think, Oh, this world is like against Christians and, and, yeah, I do see that. I do. I did see it as a burden, but now I'm realizing that it's just life is difficult sometimes. Yeah, right. You know. But so for us, or for me, I had framed the whole. My whole worldview was based on the idea that the world, as like an entity, was against what I believe, yeah. which is Christianity and of Jesus. Course. And so, yeah. So all that being said, I feel like to me, death seemed like a relief in a certain way. I, you know, I'm leaving my temporary, like rotten evil home and I get to go to awesome paradise home with Jesus. You know, I, it sounded great. I know. And it's weird. I feel like I never really thought, like really, really thought about heaven Yeah. before just a couple of years ago. And I, th- but I, I don't know. I think, I think that's kind of a thing being a Christian. I look back and think, did I really believe this stuff? Or is it just that I never, ever questioned it? Mm-hmm. And like, it was drilled into me as a child. So oh, it was always saying. like, yeah, like it was always, you know, I always just knew or it was in the back of my mind that I was going to go to heaven. Yeah. But I never really thought about it like, like that. Like, is it, you know, what's it going to be like? I mean, I, th- I thought, you know, we can't, we can't know if people would ask me, I'd be like, you know, it's not really descriptive in the Bible, like you said, and it's just going to be a place where there's no pain and no tears. You know, a friend recently said yeah. that to me, you know, I asked her what she thought heaven was like, and she said, there's going to be no tears and no pain. Um, but that's really all we can say, right. you know, there's some stuff in revelation. I think that you can maybe form some opinions about, and I think some other books that have some stuff about heaven, but like, there's so many denominations like we were talking about before and and most of them think a different thing about heaven yeah. or what you'll get in heaven right. and, and everything and it's funny like it wasn't till until a friend recently like recently i mean by like 2 or 3 years ago asked you know don't you think that heaven would be really boring i never thought of it like that before yeah. but it it made me think yeah what do we really think is going to happen in heaven right i know i i guess i That's an interesting thing you said. I think there's actually a lot of topics that when I was Christian, I didn't really, really think through like the actual practical details of stuff like heaven or what death would be like or, you know, who God is. I I don't know. I had this idea that was kind of vague in my mind and I just had faith in it, but it it was like not really clearly thought through. That's why they call it blind faith. Yeah. Well, yeah, really. (laughs) (laughs) Um but yeah, I guess I, I assumed heaven was going to be a place where we worshiped God. I remember someone describing to me, they were saying that in heaven, we're going to worship God 24 seven. And while like now as someone who doesn't believe in the existence of God at all, that sounds like torture. When yeah. I was Christian, I believed that being in the presence of God would be so overwhelming and so mind blowing that we couldn't help but worship for the rest of our life. You know, so that was kind of the way I framed it, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah. So I guess I, I did think about that side of it a little bit. Um, I think it's when you believe that you were created for God, then you don't, you're not bothered by that. Right. Like you think your, your purpose you're going back eternally home. is to worship him. Yeah. You know, then you get into questions like, why does this God need eternal worship, you know, 
is from the- everyone in the world 24 7 like why does he but whatever that's those or are like, different topics i guess <laughs> yeah or like is happiness even happiness if there's no pain and stuff like that if a lot of questions or if about there's heaven. no free will yeah you know that. all of those questions, a lot of questions. come up but yeah, it was. It, I basically thought it was just like a ultimate paradise where we'd all be worshiping God and we'd be with all of our family and friends. And I think I like believed maybe my dog would be there too. Yeah, just anything that you can think of that's good, it's got to be there right. because like it's supposed to be perfect. Yeah, you know. And even you know we've talked about this before, but that one time we were raising support for crew, and your mom was so proud of us, and mm-hmm. she told us, you know, at a Bible study, you are going to have so many jewels on your crown. Oh in yeah, heaven. that's right. And I like. I, w- I don't know what I thought about that. Maybe just like a quick like, huh, that's like a really, was that a, a metaphor or is that real that we're going to have crowns and jewels in them? But like... You questioned it at the time when she said it? Maybe like slightly, but just like, huh, I never thought about it. Mm-hmm. Like I thought maybe that was more of like a metaphor, yeah. you know, or, and then I was like, are we really going to be wearing crowns? Like, do I really get a lot of jewels? <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's just... I was on board with it. I remember when she said it. Yeah. And maybe now that you're saying that, I'm wondering if maybe that's just something my family talked about more than other people Mm -hmm. or something. But yeah, I I guess I thought that too. I thought that maybe all Christians would go to heaven, but if you were a really good Christian or if you like, if you evangelized to a lot of people or you helped save a lot of people, then you would have like a baller crown with a ton of rubies in Mm. it. Just like you can graduate or you can graduate with a summa cum laude. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, (laughs) that's what I thought. I don't know where that comes from. Maybe that's in the Bible. I don't know, but I, I believed that for some reason too. Don't quote me on this. Someone look it up for us. I think that the jewels in your crown is something from the Bible. We'll find out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the other thing I thought it was weird, actually, and this was when I was Christian too, I remember her talking about um, my funeral with you or with someone else just in casual Christian conversation. Well, it must have been with me because I do remember this conversation. Yeah. Um, and about how I wanted my funeral to be like a party a celebration yeah you know and and to me well and more specifically you wanted a statue of you with your thumbs up smiling (laughs) (laughs) over your grave okay well i I still want that i guess (laughs) but i i was always of the opinion that if you were a real christian if you really believed in god and you really believed that he was saving you and you're going to go to heaven that you should almost look forward to death because why why wouldn't you And so I thought that our funerals or Christian funerals should be big celebrations. Mm -hmm. You know, why, like, why in the world, if you're at, if you're going to this party and the star, the, the person of honor at the party, they got to go on a life, a lifelong, all expenses paid vacation where they're never going to have any pain or suffering again. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like rejoicing for the rest of their life. Everyone at that party would be stoked for them. Yeah, why is everyone so sad? Yeah, so so to me, a Christian funeral, people should be like, of course you can mourn the loss of someone in your life, but like if you actually care about the person who passed, who died, I feel like you should be excited for them. Like that's the best, as a Christian, the best possible thing that can happen to you is for you to die because then you get to go to heaven. You get to go to your home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go home. So I remember feeling that when I was a Christian and feeling like people who are really scared of death as a Christian were maybe, maybe their faith wasn't strong enough they didn't or something. They believe fully. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's funny because I was... some doubt. Yes. I just finished reading The God Delusion. Congratulations. Longest book yeah. ever. And, um, and in it, he was talking about... It was, he was basically talking about the same thing, but he was mentioning, and I never thought about it this way, you know, why aren't people, uh, relatives at, at their other relatives' deathbed you know, saying, say hello to Uncle Johnny for me or say, tell Aunt Matilda hello when you get to heaven. Right. Like, yeah. why aren't they like more? Why don't they seem more serious about it? You know, I've it. There's a lot of ways that I think like your faith maybe should if you really believed in something, it, you would it would manifest other things. Like it would that, affect your life more. Yeah, affect yeah. how you act in I, your life. Just more. the same as I always thought that if people really like believed what they were saying, why weren't they evangelizing more? Yeah. You know, like too. why aren't you telling all of your friends? This is serious, like, you guys. If, like if you actually think that your secular friends are gonna burn for eternity in hell, why then, aren't like, you ta- why aren't you, why are you not them? talking to everyone yeah. about it? You know what I mean? Yeah. There's like I think there's in like an embedded like I don't know. Distrust or a doubt or something. Or Maybe. like the embarrassment of sharing with your friends or the embarrassment of celebrating at your relative's funeral is stronger than your faith that they're going to heaven or your faith that 
your unsaved friends are not going to heaven or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, that's kind of a side topic. But yeah, when we were Christian, we kind of felt like we were okay with death. I was okay with death. I felt like it was the finish line. And no matter when it happened to me, um, I was in a certain way looking forward to going back home. Mm -hmm. I never thought about it like so intently. I wasn't necessarily, you know, courageous about dying. The thing that still bothered me with death was I just didn't want to think about you dying and then like me missing you You're being stuck or here. people I love dying and me like missing them, even though it was great that they're in heaven, but I just like would miss them. And then I also didn't like thinking about if I died first, like if I was in heaven, like watching you cry, I would yeah. think about that. Like, do I get to oh, see right. you back on earth? And yeah. like, that would, I would be sad. Like, I mean, in heaven, am I just like smiling at you crying? Did you picture like on a, earth? a TV screen in heaven or like, yeah, you know like how crazy binoculars? You see like in the clouds and then like, um, you, I feel like this is from movies, like you're in the clouds, uh -huh. right? In heaven. And all of a sudden in the middle of a cloud or, or God or someone like a Abraham, like he sticks his hand out and he pulls the clouds <laughs> aside. And then it like a beam down magnifying glass. Like, oh yeah. Pops like in, zoom in, zoom in really fast. And uh -huh. then you're there, whoever I want to see. And I'm like crying cause I'm missing you. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Don't know. That's, it's wild. You know, but I still, I mean, I think those are my, still my things that I fear most about death is just the grief yeah, part right. of it, you know? Yeah, of course. But there is, yeah, so there basically there was kind of a lot of security in that. And I think a lot of people, like when we, when we shared our new beliefs, we shared with my family that we're not Christian anymore, that immediately becomes their biggest fear. That we're going right, to hell. Rightfully so, you know, because they believe that the death isn't the end. And so... Yeah, it's a big deal. And I think when you're Christian, there's a lot of security in honestly believing that when you die, it's going to be fine. You're going to paradise. Like that gave, that gave me a ton of comfort when I was Christian. Yes. And when we started leaving Christianity, that became a huge issue. Yes. Like the, I think this, I, I never really thought that we were going to have to reframe death. I never, I, well, I really never planned on rethinking everything we've rethought. We never, we never planned on leaving Christianity at all. So this all just kind of happened yeah. to us and we were kind of recoiling from it as it happened. But one of the biggest things that held us in for so long was, are we going to go to hell when yeah, we die? Yeah, the fear of hell. Yeah. So I think that's really common. But once we processed that, and I think it was about maybe a year ago or two. Um, and we that was, yeah, a year ago when we kind of came to terms with, what was it? It was that we realized that, I would rather go to hell than serve the monstrous beast that is God as described in the Bible. Yes. So then that like kind of coming to the conclusion that God's not worth following, even if he is real, that kind of rid us of that horrible fear of hell that we had leading up to that point. Yeah. And then yeah, it sort of, at least it did help. There was some like residual lingering fear of hell just because it is like so it's, scary, yeah. eternal torment, you believe eternal it for torture. So long, it's, yeah horrifying yeah but um the good news of the gospel is horrifying yes so like we mentioned in the beginning we're we're we really want to talk about the night we came to terms with death mm -hmm. and it was something that hit me hard one night we were growing and realizing more and more that we didn't believe in christianity we were starting to call ourselves ex-christians we were saying you know we're not christian mm -hmm. anymore i'm not a christian anymore and then um, you know, I don't, I don't think that hell is real. I don't believe that heaven is real. And all these things are very new to us at the time. Yes. It was like the, the first time we were being able to admit some of this stuff to ourselves. They were stacking up. Mm -hmm. And one night I remember I was brushing my teeth and I just started crying and I looked at you and I was like, oh my gosh, I just realized that <laughs> this is hard to say now, but like when we die, we're gone. And like as a Christian person, you know, past Christian who never, ever had to think about this before, you know, and I, I, I can just like hear Christians like listening to this saying, well, see, like if you had Jesus, you wouldn't have to think this way. But just because something gives you comfort doesn't mean it's true. So anyway, I just have to go back. I can't, I had this thing hit me in my stomach that I'm going to be gone when I die. And Sorry, I'm crying. The worst thing about that is just like, you know, not seeing you, yeah. not seeing our family in heaven. And when I say that out loud, it sounds ridiculous. 
it sounds ridiculous that I would think now that I'm going to go to this special paradise in the sky and see all of my family when all I have to tell me that was this one Bible, that book, ancient book that barely says anything about heaven, let alone how many like pets you're going to be able to see. You know, like I just <laughs> thought that I would be like chilling in paradise with everybody I knew and loved. Yeah. And now I like came to the realization that I'm done at the end of this. And I told you immediately, of course, because I'm crying. And yeah. so you're like, what's wrong? And like, do you remember what? Yeah. What you thought? I remember I remember you talking about that and it feeling like I like got slammed <sighs> into a wall as well. Mm -hmm. Like it stopped me in my tracks. It's the type of thing that you don't really think about. You don't I don't know. I think probably subconsciously kind of avoid thinking about death. I feel like that's pretty unhelpful if you're like thinking about death all the time <laughs> when you're living. But I remember you bringing that up and it hitting me too and I don't know. It's like a, a a big, heavy sense of like dread for death and a big, heavy fear of loneliness at the end of our life mm -hmm. and kind of this like impending cliff that we're marching towards mm -hmm. with time and that we can't slow it down. We can't control it. We can't do anything about it. We're like marching towards the end of this cliff and we there's nothing we can do about it. And I remember you bringing it up and you were upset and you told me and it kind of got me starting to think about it too. And mm -hmm. we had to have like a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because we're coming from this Christian background. So of course we never realized how comforting heaven was to us yeah. before, you know, we had never spoken aloud about together about it. Like, wow, I'm so grateful that we get to go home at the end of this. And we don't have to think about, you know, we don't have existential dread. We don't have to think about us just being gone. Us, You know, I don't know. Our, our lives being over because you know we're never gonna end we're like eternal it was weird I mean, because we like literally not there was never a point in my whole life where i was like conscious where i had to think about death being the end of my life you know because i was i gave my life to jesus as an eight-year-old yes you know and so like before i was eight it's not like i was scared of death but, you know, before someone shared the gospel with me, I wasn't scared of death. It wasn't until someone shared the gospel with me that I became afraid of hell dying. Or hell. Hell. And hell. the fact that I, like, signed up for God's insurance plan, that meant from that point on, from the time I was eight until I was 25, I never had to consider the fact that death was the end. I just... It, didn't cross my mind, you well, know? Well, even just, I didn't necessarily have the gospel shared to me because, like, that's not the kind of religion I was in, but, like, but heaven was always talked about as a thing that was actually there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as a child... Like, totally real. You, not everyone, every adult's telling you that it's real. Like, no one's even being like, okay, you need to believe in this now. It's just already talked about as as, as if it's fact. Right. So, of course, like, I don't know, like, it makes your perceptions of the world really skewed, like, being a child and being brought up into all of this it's it's such a strange mind f i can't say for it. sure yeah i i mean it's it's a weird thing and us having that conversation like a year ago or whenever we had it was the first time we really thought about it and that kind of that whole topic was one of a few things that we really struggled with in terms of letting go of our faith completely because i i think like there's certain things that make you really want to hold on to your Christian faith. And one of them, and probably the biggest one for me was the fear of hell, the fear of dying, mm -hmm. the fear of ending my life and there being nothing there or worse, ending my life and being like thrown into a pit of fire. Yes. And so, yeah, that is like really a really difficult thing to grapple with. Um, losing the security of heaven when you die, it felt like giving up something big and i feel like it made us really really question and made us really want to be sure that like are we sure that god's not real mm -hmm. you know yes i think that i i think about it all the time like that of course we as humans would want some sort of comfort because death is scary and mm -hmm. it's finite so it That's seems like the biggest only human fear, you know, logical I mean, like, what else that, could it be? Yeah, we would make up a reason to be comforted, a, yeah. a person that would comfort us from it. Right. You know, and it, and so to me, I just wanted to face reality. I was like, I don't want the, tr I don't want the truth in quotes that sounds good and it's going to make me feel better. I want 
the truth. The freaking truth. Yeah. I want reality, mm -hmm. you know? And so I feel like at that time was when it really hit in because I was like, I don't care. I don't care about God anymore. But I just like realized that this is something I need to think about. And one of my first thoughts was I'm so mad. You know how many people have already thought about this? And I was like, I don't know how old I was, 29. <laughs> 29. Yeah. And I'm thinking about it now. I was really like, I was super upset that I, you know, I went through all of those thoughts. Like, why was I indoctrinated as a child? And how could I believe in this heaven? And why didn't I have more of a natural, you know, progression of thinking about death instead of being like slapped in the face with it, yeah. you know, in the middle of brushing my teeth. And we... Do you remember like hugging and just yeah, crying? Yeah. And oh, so emotional. And it was like two kids, you know, it's uh, with so much of this stuff with Christianity. These realizations we're having like threw us back into childhood yes, where it yeah. felt like I'm you're 29. I was 27. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a seven year old learning like what life is for the mm -hmm. first time. Yeah. And now having to realize, oh, my God, we're going to die. Yeah. Yeah. And so, all right. So those, that was all pretty negative and morbid and, and hard and heavy. And, yeah. yeah. But what we decided that night was that we truly understood the meaning of not taking things for granted. Mm -hmm. I felt that in like a blink of an eye after we sort of talked about it for a second that I completely understood, you know, what is meant by this life is all you get. And I feel that even a Christian can learn, uh, like, I don't know, a good urgency from this message that even if you do die and get to go somewhere else, even if that's what you believe, this life is going to be way different. And like, it's, I feel like we need to take care of ourselves here and do what we want. Yeah. You know, I think, I mean, for us, obviously, we don't believe we have anything else, but like still this life and everything that it is, is is the only chance we get at this. And it made me, be, I was like, I, we need to spend so much time together. You know, we need to not take each other for granted. We need to not take our friends for granted or any opportunities that we get or anything that we want to try out. Like we, we need to like use this to, I don't know, propel yeah. our, ourselves forward. We need we to, we can't get down in the dumps about this. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like we need to, <laughs> we can feel our sadness and feel our grief about, the condition of our lives and the fact that our lives are ending someday. But I feel like we kind of made the decision that we need to use this to motivate us. And I don't think that that's something you can't just like decide, okay, I'm fine with death now. Let's keep living our lives, you know? But I think that's been kind of a conscious decision since that point. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of the start of us really understanding that this life is so precious yes. that we have. I just value everything more. It's like everything comes to life more because it's all like vital and essential and it's all finite and it all has a time. And I want to like, I want to live the shit out of my life yes. while I'm here. And you know, what's funny is like all of those things and all of the feelings we're experiencing now. And I don't know, even the sense of urgency as Christians call it, like all of the things that Christianity promised us, like, you know, that things would be more beautiful. Marriage is more beautiful within Christ or relationships are like more perfect within Christ or life is, has more beauty and you can see the beauty of the creator. All of that. Like I was like, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. But now on the other side, I'm like, whoa, that was like limiting my brain of what I, how I can see beauty in this world. And now that, like you said, when things are finite or when we're able to have free will or when we can choose like, who to love and and when to love and and all of that it everything becomes more beautiful more magical yeah. and life becomes more lifelike and more colorful like you said absolutely yeah and i feel like the more i've been reading about all of this uh, you know i've been reading from other ex-christians they've experienced the same thing leaving the church and realizing that their lives are you know finite has made them view life as more precious I just read something today that was one of the top things that they felt, you know, a gift that they were given yeah. from leaving Christianity. Isn't that counterintuitive? Yes. Because I, I think in the church, Christians and your pastors and whoever, at least they told me that uh, yeah, exactly what you said, outside of Christianity, the world is evil and wicked and there's you have no purpose. And like, what's the point of even living without God? I felt that. Mm -hmm. No, that was the other thing. When I when we left Christianity, I felt like, what is the point of even living? Yes. You know, that all of that stuff, they tell you that the world is like terrible without God. 
And so you stay in. But then once you leave, like you were just saying, we experience that the world is like a thousand times better in every way yes. than it was before. It's weird. It, it is. It's really counterintuitive. I, I just I think that Christians are looking at the world through these like rosy glasses that in their own minds, they're seeing the world in the most beautiful way possible or they're having a marriage in the most beautiful way possible or they're living in the most beautiful, most honorable way possible. But what we've come to realize is that there's no there's no joy without suffering and there's no life without death and there's no like vulnerability without um i don't know they're, they're, you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like there's there has to be a balance to everything and if you eliminate the bad parts of life if you eliminate death essentially you're also eliminating some of the vitality of life itself and we experience that so strongly mm -hmm. getting hit with the fact that you're going to die someday and that there's no heaven to catch you is super hard mm -hmm. it was really hard for us and it, it like I said, this conversation maybe makes it sound like we just instantly were like, oh, it's fine. That's it's not really how it was. You know, we thought about it a lot and we had feelings of fear of death for a while. And it was something that we kind of had to like consciously keep deciding, no, it's okay that I'm going to die. But it just means like, let's, let's live now. Mm -hmm. One day we'll die. But for now we're alive. I, I think that was in, I don't remember where I read that, but I really like that quote. Mm -hmm. I like that sentiment as mm -hmm. well. That... I feel like if you're constantly focusing on your future, you're forgetting about the now. And something that we've really tried to practice is living in the moment. And that's actually really, really hard to do. Mm -hmm. And you need to be consciously conscious of it, for lack of a better word. And I think that being an ex-Christian really has allowed us to be more present in the moment because we're not thinking about our etern eternity or our eternal you know, joys or riches or how everybody else's eternity is going to turn out. And we're just doing this one step at a time. We're just here right now. Mm -hmm. And another thing I want to say that has given me some comfort, and I've, I've read this uh, concept or quote several times, but I recently read it in The God Delusion is, and it's written by someone famous, I can't remember who said it, but just that basically we were all dead for billions of years before we were born and we didn't feel a thing and it went by like a snap and after we die we won't feel the pain it's not like we have to dread it because we were we were gone and didn't exist for so long before we were ever here mm -hmm. it's going to be the same thing yeah and i think that is comforting it, to me too yes i feel like it's it's just like going back to sleep again, you yeah. know, and it's almost it. I feel that now death is almost like going to sleep. Yeah. And we, you know, when we go to sleep, where do we go? I mean, we're not, it goes by like a flash right. sometimes and then we just wake up. But like, it's not scary at all to put your head down on a pillow and no one thinks about it. Like, why are we like not conscious? Right. You know, it's almost like we die every night. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's such a big topic. And I, I've never heard anybody else talk about this specifically, you know, thinking about death. And it was kind of a spooky night for us. But um, I think it was a super important conversation to have. Of course. It's hard now. It's like growing up. Yeah. It's again, it's all these conversations are conversations maybe we should have had when we were like 15 with our friends. Yes. And we're having them when we're almost 30. I think it's hard talking to Christians about this kind of thing because there's an element of C. It would be better you. if you believed in God. And I just want to say again that just because something is more comforting doesn't mean that it's true. Tell us if you've ever thought about this before or if you've ever been shaken up by it. Um, we were. Yes. <laughs> we were, but yeah. But now we are writing our own bucket lists and we really want to, you know, live life to the fullest. Yeah. And so I wanted to end with a quote that I've... Uh, I had on my phone for a couple months now and I've been trying to read every once in a while just to keep it in the front of my mind to keep me focused on what my life is all about. And it's from Hunter S. Thompson. Life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather to skid in broadside in a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, wow. I like that. Yeah. That's really that cool. Hits. That gets me really pumped. Mm-hmm. 
So I think that's all we have for this week. Uh, You guys all go out and live your lives to the fullest, and we'll see you next week. Thank you all so much for coming along on this journey with us. All of your messages and support means so much. If you'd like to connect with us or support our podcast, there are a few different ways you can do that. First, you can find us on Instagram at born.again.again. You can also join our private group on Facebook. Or you can check out our website, bornagainagain.co, where we have all of these episodes, our blog with some posts that we've written, as well as a big list of books, movies, documentaries, and articles that have been helpful in our deconversion. And finally, if you'd like to support us financially, you can do that through our Patreon. Again, thank you so much.